Hello, it's Thursday, and welcome to the first ever episode of Not My Idea. How it went down is I picked five of the potential ideas out of a bucket. Now, about 130 of you voted. Loch Ness Monster was the winner. So today I will be presenting to you my very first no-so pattern. I have dubbed her the no-so Nessie. Not a single pin or needle was used in her production. Okay, so let's talk about tools and materials. So to make your Loch Ness Monster, I'm going to recommend you have two different colors. This is eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn. I am using one color for the main body and one color for sort of the underbelly. This one here is Carnival brand and I'm afraid this one here is just miscellaneous from my stash. I, if it had a label, I lost it many moons ago. You will also need your 3.5 millimeter hook and a pair of scissors and a pair of 15 millimeter safety eyes. Now I am using a pair that I painted in my customizing safety eyes video and you're going to need some stuffing, but that's it. You don't need any pins. You don't need any needles. Don't even have pins or needles out on my desk right now. Okay, so to construct your Nessie, what we're going to make first is we're going to make her four flippery feet uh, because we make those as four separate pieces. All right, so with the pattern that's on your screen at the moment, do keep in mind that you will need to be making two where you start with your belly color and change to your body color and two of the exact same patterns starting with your body color and changing to your belly color. That's how we make two flippers for the right and then two flippers for the left. All right, so after the first four rows, we're going to work three single crochet and then chain one and turn, leaving the rest of the stitches unworked. We're then going to be working backwards and forwards to uh, build up the sort of point of the flipper. We'll then be working 26 single crochet around the edge of the entire piece with the first single crochet falling in the decrease three from the last row. So once we are at this point here, so 26 stitches, you'll see that there's also still like a little bit of a gap there, but I have 26 around, so that's where I'm stopping. The next stitch will be worked in the first stitch of that round, and I'm going to change to my body color. So in order to do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch I'm gonna be working into. I'm gonna pull up a loop of my current color, and then I'm gonna hold that color out of the way. So I'm holding it parallel with my hook off to one side, and I'm gonna grab the color I'm changing to, which for me is this blue, and I'm gonna hold that yarn alongside as well. So I'm holding them next to each other alongside the hook and I'm going to grab that and use it to finish off that stitch. And from there on, I'm just going to be working in that new color. Now you can neaten off these colors as well. So we trim off our old color because we're done with it for now. And then I'm just going to tie those two ends in a little knot. And that's how I change colors. So now we are going to continue on and build up the top part of the flipper in our body color. Okay, so 11 stitches into that row, we're going to hit our first bit of trickery that's going to help us with our construction. So all it is, is we wanna leave a little four stitch opening in each flipper where we're gonna be attaching it to the body later. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is chain four. Notice I'm not chaining very tightly. They're very loose stitches that we will have to work into later. And then I'm going to skip the next four single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna stitch into this one here next. And then I'm just gonna continue on and finish that row as usual, just like that. So that is our first row complete. That first stitch is still in our belly color just because that's where we did our color change. All right, so for the next row, I'm just going to put my decrease and my first lot of five single crochet and then a decrease. So one. Okay, so that's the end of the first row there. So you'll see that we've got a little bit of an opening. So now I'm gonna work the first couple of stitches of the next row and then show you how we're gonna deal with that chain. I'm gonna work a decrease and then the first lot of five single crochet and a decrease. Just like that. I'm gonna stop and have an argument with my yarn. There we go. So now the second lot of five single crochet and a decrease is going to fall across these chains. So work your five single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five. So you'll see that I'm working into the loops of those chains. And then the next one is a decrease and you're going to perform that decrease as though that chain was just a regular stitch just like that. So now I'm going to finish working that round just like that. So you see that we've worked almost the whole way back to the tip. So we have three more rows that are just pretty standard that we're gonna to work to finish closing off this flipper. So there is our opening. And you'll note that it curves in a, a sort of teardrop shape away from where that opening is. As mentioned, you're going to need two for your right and two for your left. 
So I'm going to pop those up here. And what we're going to make next is it's kind of a belly dish. <laughs> so it starts in the middle and it works up as a large oval flat piece. And then when we reach the edges, we're going to stitch our flippers on to attach them as we go. Okay, so that is the end of row 10 and you see we've worked up our little belly patch. So in the next row, what we're going to actually do is attach all of the flippers. So I'm gonna work the first seven stitches of that row just as normal single crochet. Let's stitch seven. So you'll note that there are these sort of four vague points which are roughly going to be where we attach our feet. So at this point, I'm gonna lay them out. So uh, I attach the right ones in the right place and I'm putting them sort of belly side up because I'm working my piece belly side up at the moment. So that's the inside, this is the outside. So the first one we want to attach will be upper right. So we've got our gap there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this piece flush with my belly. So I've got right sides together. So this is the right side of the, the belly and this is the right side of the fin. And we're gonna work the next four stitches through one layer of the fin, the one that matches the right color and through the belly stitch. Now it might be a little tricky to insert your hook through some of them, but make sure that you do attach it along four stitches, just like that. So that's what it looks like from where we just performed that join. If I bend it up the other way, you'll see that we've got a fairly nice smooth join between the belly and the flipper. We're then going to work 15 single crochet around and attach the next one. There we go. So the next one we'll be attaching is the upper left, once again, lining up our sides and working through both layers for four stitches. Now it should be noted that the body side of the flipper isn't secured. So it is making a little pocket still and you can't, you should be able to stick your finger in if you feel like it. <laughs> um, anywho, so now I'm gonna do six single crochet along the belly and then we'll attach the next flipper. And this one here is the back left, line it up and through four stitches. Then 17 stitches around and we'll attach the final foot. And it's our final flipper. And it should be noted that this flipper will overlap your row a little bit. So the belly itself is 60 stitches around and we would have just worked, I think it's 61 stitches in total, but that's okay. There was just, you've worked an extra stitch in the row, your belly is still 60 stitches around and now you've got all four flippers attached. So that is what it looks like from the top. You'll note that this is the back of the belly because we'll be building the rest of the Loch Ness on top. And that is what she should look like from underneath. So you should have a fairly nice flat join with each of the flippers. Each one should still act as a little pocket. So we haven't secured down the top layer. So in our next stitch, we are going to change color back to our body color. And this is where the real fun begins. All right, so now we're gonna work the next row around and this row we will be attaching the top part of the flipper, which should really just cement them into the body. So the first stitch of that row we changed colors in, so I'll be working five more. So those are those five stitches. And I'm now going to work four single crochet across the four stitches of the body part of the flipper. I'm not going to work into those belly stitches. Just like that. Now, if you do this right, your fin will still be a pocket. So give your fin the pocket test. If you can't put your finger in there, something's gone wrong. <laughs> so that means we'll be skipping the four stitches of the belly there. So one, two, three, and four, and continuing on from here. And we're going to work around the belly, doing that to each of the other fins as well until we arrive back at the start. Okay, so that is all four flippers. So you'll note that we changed colors back to our, our belly color on each side to build up sort of the underside of the head and the underside of the tail. And I will be continuing to do that, though don't feel obliged to, it'll be just as cute in one color. We'll now be working four more rows around like this, and then we're gonna stop and do some more structury nonsense to split our, our piece into a, a neck, a back, and a tail.
All right, so now we've done that, who is ready for some structuring nonsense? So what we'll be doing now is creating like a scaffold basically that's going to split this one round into what will essentially be three rounds and one will turn into the neck, one will turn into the back and one will turn into the tail. In order to do that, first up, we're going to do 10 single crochet across. Like so. So you'll note that we should be four body colored stitches before the neck under, under piece. And what I'm going to do is chain nine. So keeping these chains pretty loose. And I'm going to skip 15 stitches. 15, so I'll be working into this stitch here. And you turn your work as though you've worked in those stitches. So you'll be inserting your hook from the outside. Just like so. So that's our first little bit of scaffolding. And so now we're going to do 15 single crochet around, just continuing that spiral as though we were working normally. Just ignore the tangle developing on my left here. I know I sure am. So that's 15 there. So note on this end, so we're at the, the tail end now, uh, we are three stitches before the belly color kicks in. So that's where you should be after 15 stitches. And we're gonna chain nine again. And once again, skip 15 stitches and working our first stitch, inserting our hook from the outside, work five stitches to complete the row. So just like that, we have our scaffolding. Or what I'm gonna call scaffolding, there might actually be a technical term for that, but I think we've all established at this point that technical terms are not my specialty. So what we are going to be doing now is finishing off the back piece. We're just going to continue on from where we currently are. Uh, and we'll end up with a hole on either side. One is the head, one is the tail. So the next row will be working 48 single crochet around. Now, when we get to the chains, you'll note that chains have two loops to them and you will go, you're going to want to work through both loops of the chain. So what that looks like is pick up one loop and then the other loop and note that there is still a strand going below your hook and we're going to work our single crochet through both of those loops just like that and we're going to do that to every stitch across the chains right down to the last one and that's what that ends up looking like so you've got your stitches on top and then your other side of the chain gives you this lovely sort of sharp finish edge and now I'm just gonna continue around and finish off that row okay so that is that first row round complete so you'll note that we've got that lovely sort of straight edge happening on the underside of those chains now and in the meantime we have 48 stitches around to work in we're gonna be working seven more rows just to dome off this back and if you were going to introduce any stripes or spots now would be the time probably to introduce that color I'm going to do mine completely in blue for the sake of this but you'll note that I did a little star pattern on my original guy and uh, it works up pretty nicely in, in the flat space. So that's what we'll be working on now. So there is our back piece finished and as promised, we have a hole on either end for a tail and a neck. So the next bit we're gonna work on is the neck and then the head, hello. So you, pick, you work out which side that is by looking at the shape of the flippers. So you'll see that they all curve back towards this way, making this the back and this the front. So this is where we're going to be working our neck. Okay, so we're gonna attach our body color to our hook with a slip knot. And we're going to join in the first free stitch of the base piece. So this is where we did worked that line of chains in the structure. And we're going to go down to the base and this is the first free stitch. And that's where we're going to join. And I'm gonna start by working 15 single crochet around uh, in my body color and then my belly color where appropriate. Just like that. So now comes the time for us to work stitches along the edge of where the body is. So what we're going to do is work front post. So inserting our hook from the front of the piece around the post of the stitch to the back of the piece, we're going to work 10 single crochet across. 
So working front post helps pull our head and neck up into the correct position. Whereas if we were just working through normal stitches, it would be sort of a little bit floppier and a little bit more down. So at the end of that row, you should have 25 stitches active in your round. And from there, we are going to work 12 more rows just to build up that neck, swapping to the belly color where appropriate, but otherwise staying in our body color. And that's what we're going to do now before we come back and start working on the head and the jaw. And we're going to change back to our belly color in that final stitch. Okay, so we've worked up to the top of the head and uh, I'm fighting the urge to make him narrate the series like this. So what we're going to be doing next is working up the jaw, which is actually worked as a flat piece, just working backwards and forwards. So what we'll be doing next is front posting six single crochet along this, this line here. Just like that. Now, because we front posted, you can see that it's turned that nice little corner, which is going to allow us to build out this way to build the underside of the jaw. So now we're going to work just nine rows, building up the underside of that head. That is the underside of our jaw. And so now what we are going to be doing is attaching our yarn here in the very first free stitch of the neck, because we'll be working around these stitches first and then working our way around the head and building up our head shape. So we're going to work a couple of rows like that. And then I'm going to stop and introduce you to a little like knotty concoction that I've come up with that I've used for the nostrils. Okay. So I've worked those nine stitches around the back of the neck, and now we're going to be working a row of stitches around the edge of our jaw piece. Now what that's going to look like is we're going to use front post for that. And the reason we do that is it gives us this nice little tucked under lip, which is something that we are looking for here. So I'm perfectly happy just to twist mine around and you should do the same for yours. I find crochet is very forgiving of the manipulations we put it through. So I'm going to just work front post stitching around the entire rim of this piece. Uh, and you're going to want to fit 20 in around the jaw. That's my 20 stitches. And now I've done this and he's feeling all fatalistic and dramatic. We're just going to pop him back in the, around the right way, pull those stitches up and around so that we've got our rim to work in. There is our under jaw established, right? So the next row is worked as single crochet through both loops until we reach the jaw again. And then we'll be working back post single crochet around this edge just to finish locking in that lip. Okay, so that's the end of the normal single crochet and now we're going to back post. So that locks in that lip there for us. All right, so in the next row we'll be adding the nostrils. So first I'll just work around uh, until we get to the front of the head. So, so there we go. So the nostril is going to be worked as kind of a modified decrease. So what I'm going to do is insert my hook through the first stitch. I'm doing front loops only, but uh, you can do both loops if you'd like. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. So I have two loops on my hook at the moment. Now through that front loop, I'm going to chain three keeping that back loop on my hook at the same time, just like that. So now I've got my chain three and my two loops on my hook. I'm then going to insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop again. So now I have three loops on my hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So it kind of works like a decrease that has sort of a little curl to it. And that gives us this little nostril shape. So I'm going to work two single crochet, across and then we're going to repeat that and do a second nostril on the other side. Now you can see that the back half of that stitch looks exactly the same as a regular single crochet or a decrease does with the two loops. It's just, it also has this cute little 
nostril bobble at the front. Now this could be a standard stitch, I just don't know about it, but this is sort of what I've come up with to add the nostrils to our little beastie friend. So insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, chain three in the front loop, just like that. And then insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And then give it a little pinch to make it face forward. And there are our nostrils. Okay, I'm then just going to work seven single crochet to finish that row off. And that is the last of the tricky rows for the head. We're going to work the next six rows to just finish off this head in, in a little dome shape. Okay, and then we'll weave that end around and pull it tight to close. So you might have noticed that at this point we don't have any stuffing in our little friend here. Oh dear, oh dear, that's upsetting. So. We're going to be inserting our eyes and the easiest way to do that is to completely stuff your beastie, position your eyes exactly where you want them to sit, then remove the stuffing, clip on the backs of the eyes and restuff the piece. And when you restuff, you can take your time to stuff the whole piece, including just a little bit of stuffing in each of the flippers. Okay, so our final step is just to attach our tail. Now we're going to be using a lot of the same techniques we use to attach the neck. The only difference being is that we're going to join in the first stitch available from the back piece, which is this one here. Now, if you need help with that, you can just count five of the of the body colored stitches away from the tail patch. So one, two, three, four, and then that one there is five. So we'll be joining in this stitch here and we'll be starting with our front post stitches along the back ridge. But then other than that, we'll just be working continuous spiral up to the tip of the tail. Okay, and with that, we just weave the end around, pull it tight to close and tuck the end in. Okay, so now with all the pieces made, all we have to do is assemble. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so there is our finished Loch Ness Monster. I like this pattern a lot, but I feel like with just a few tweaks, I could turn it into a very serviceable la Lapras pattern. I don't know if you are any of your Pokemon fans out there. I just, I don't know if it's this color combination or it's the flippers getting to me, but I just, I feel like there's a hidden Lapras somewhere in this. So yes, that is it for this week's Not My Idea episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be looking to run another one again in another couple of weeks. Probably around the end of July, you'll see another poll pop up and you can have another vote and decide what we'll be working on next. So a pattern for this little guy, I have decided to release it. So a written version will be sent out to my patrons as well as provided in my store. I will leave a link to both in the description down below. Let me know in the comments how I did regarding a no-sew pattern. And uh, if you want to see more no-sew patterns in future, or if you don't really mind either way, like if you liked it, comment if you've got something to say, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Okay, bye.